So thank you very much for the kind introduction. introduction. Um, my name is Claudia Hefner, as you have already heard. And um, yeah, my last experience of um, our um, Brussels experience have been in the Brussels office in, uh, for the Hermes Association. And um, there uh, I was mainly um, working on EU research politics. And this leads me uh, to, yeah, to my session now. But first of all, I want to um, tell you that we, we uh, share our uh, presentation in two parts. That means I will start with the EU research politic area and my colleague, Ms. Uh, Stangel, she, um, she's going to um, continue with the funding opportunities. And if you have any kind of questions, feel free to ask your questions, even during this, uh, the talk or later on. And um, probably you have seen in the agenda that we have, um, after the break, the second part of our presentation concerning the funding opportunities. And there we have all already foreseen um, a slot for a discussion round. So that means concerning your experiences or your questions you might have, so there we have a, um, a bigger slot for your questions on, and the discussion. So, um, as I have already said, uh, there are um, two ways uh, to, to how you can concentrate on EU activities and how to come or how to build up a successful uh, proposal. That means not only that you know about the funding instruments, but also about the funding landscape. And this is then um, the point when we are um, speaking about European research politics. And this leads to my agenda. So I want to show you the basics in EU research um, politics. And so we should start with that. You see here um, a small slide. And with this slide, I want to tell you that when you're doing your research, you're not doing your research activity in a in a tower or just in your lab. It means as well that you're doing research for society, for a special need. And that means also that you are working for the needs of politics because the European um, politicians, they have a special idea about EU strategies, where the EU should go into, into the future, how we should yeah, develop the European Union but as well the industry, that means that you have in EU funding projects the possibility to work very closely together, even with um, the European Commission, but as well th with industry. That means if you are, for example, um, a coordinator of an EU project, then you will very closely get uh, information about their needs. You don't only, you, you're not only meeting them in a conference and you have a small talk or a lunch, for example, but then you have really the feeling why sometimes they have difficulties to um, offer to the community this or that, or which part of the project they can do and which part not. For example, um, intellectual property rights. So that's very useful for your own career that you not only know something, something about research, but as well about um, industry. Yeah, concerning the uh, legislative procedure, there you see at the moment the three main um, bodies or the EU institutions. That means the European uh, Commission, the first one. And they are build, uh, the European Commission together with the European Parliament and the Council of the European Union they are building somehow the uh, triangle of power on EU yeah, legislation, you could say. And very important for you to know is for you to know is that the European Commission is the one who's um, starting with a proposal for a legislation, but the other um, EU institutions they are as well involved. That means the European Parliament is um, giving comments, the Council of the European Union as well, and there they have to, um, yeah, they have to agree to this leg legislation. Because very often uh, in the news it is said, um, the EU is doing this or that. 
and a lot of people are then thinking about the European Commission. But very often this is not the European Commission, but the Council. So um, this means the Council is um, the Council of the European Union. Um, there you can see the, 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 the part of the member states. They are the minist ministers um, taking part. And this means very often they are the, um, the national member state, the national, yeah, um, uh, countries, which are, um, for example, changing a legislation, for example, on um, CO2 emissions. Mm? Very often they are then reducing a goal which was set by the European Commission. And uh, yeah, I will sometimes probably use some abbreviations. That means, for example, for, for European Commission, EC, or for the Council of the European Union, just Council. So just to know that for you. And there are some other in um, European institutions like these, these two. These are somehow older EU institutions, the European uh, Committee of the Regions and the European Economic and Social Committee. They are very often um, at the moment writing position papers concerning special legislation, legislative uh, drafts of the European Commission. Um, yeah, and important for you to know is that the European Commission is built up for a certain time period. These are uh, five years. So um, the, the current European Commission was built up in 2014 and will be renewed in autumn 2019. That's probably somehow important for you to know because this is already next year and you can nowadays already feel that there is a big change um, concerning um, how, to, yeah, how to put priorities on the Brussels, Brussels level. Here you can see um, the priorities of the European Commission and these kind of priorities are set by the President of the European Commission. And you see here that um, seven of these priorities um, are feeded, you could say, by, by research, by RTD. Mm -hmm. And if you look up these seven um, relate to RTD related um, priorities, you can see they're very close to, to market orientation. Mm -hmm. You see, for example, the second one, uh, a connected digital single market, um, or for example, um, um, how do you say, um, a reasonable and balanced free trade agreement with the United States, for example. So these are, they can already see that there's a, yeah, a, um, a strong link to, the, to market relations orientation, but also to some um, thematic areas, like for example energy. You can find the energy union, this, this is the, the third one with the, the windmill. <laughs> and a climate, um, yeah, fighting climate change, for example. And this leads as well to other political, um, I say, backgrounds. For example, the um, SDGs, the, the Sustainable Development Goals from Paris. So all these kind of um, political agreements, you will see they find um, a special way into the uh, funding opportunities to which we'll come later on. And another example here is um, uh, number seven, Europe as a strong global actor. There, for example, you can have in mind um, the PV industry, which was quite strong in, in the EU, but nowadays the P uh, photovoltaic industry is quite weak. And it was an active decision by the Commission that they want to build up an, a new, how I say, a second or a, yeah, industry 2.0 for photovoltaics in the EU and they want to become the EU as a global, global leader in this field. And the, all these together leads or comes afterwards in a work program or in a funding um, activity. So one of these uh, political priorities is the Europe 2020 strategy. You see five objectives, employment, research and innovation where you can find yourself climate change and energy, education and fighting poverty. So you can see these aims or 
um, objectives are quite uh, open. Hmm? You can, for example, on fighting poverty, you can put a lot of things into that. But if you see the um, three main pillars, there you see again what I said before, there's one word which is always repeated, it's growth. Hmm? This leads again to, to market, somehow also to, this, um, to the, um, the first word here in, in the pillar of smart growth, innovation. So there you can see all this together um, works on the EU agenda for jobs and growth. Probably a lot of you have already heard about that because this is at the moment the big um, word for the, for the uh, current European Commission and probably we will come back to that later but if you have in mind that the, the Commissioner for um, research and innovation at the moment is Mr. Muedas, who had been, uh, who worked before that um, at Goldman Sachs. So this gives you the orientation um, how research in the EU is at the moment um, evolving. Yeah, and probably there it's important to know um, in which time period the Europe 2020 strategy was created. In, um, for example, the um, the strategies um, for the time period of 2010 to 2020. And if you remember, in 2007 we had the financial crisis, which came or, or which um, um, which was even worse in 2010. And this, if you have this in mind, you can also very good understand that here the EU competitive competitiveness um, and the innovation focus is so strong. And again, here jobs and growth. And for example, if you see the um, three percent um, objective for um, uh, for of the G GDP for research and innovation, you can be sure that this is not reached in each member state at the moment in the European Union. But this is the the goal to reach. Yeah, one part of the. Um, Europe 2020 strategy is the Innovation Union, um, which you can see here in the, in the first uh, slide of smart growth. Um, here, these um, small bullet, bullet points, they are somehow flagship initiatives. They can also see that the word flagship is, in diff is used in different uh, contexts of the um, European Union or the European Commission. And um, yeah, this innovation union is therefore to realize the European research area or to, to foster the European research area. This means also for you as researcher that you can freely move to another country and that you have the possibility to, um, yeah, to, to do your studies in different countries, to, yeah, to have mobility of researchers. And there it's very important for you to know, I hope you can read it there because it's written in, in white letters, is the Innovation Union scoreboard um, in which we have uh, special indicators which at the end show, um, should show a successful innovation system in the member states. And, thi oops, and this at the end is very important for you, for example, if you are interested in some special funding instruments as, for example, widening participation, spreading excellence. That means that you work together with um, EU countries from the new member states. But probably we will hear something about that later. Another example where um, the European politics are important for you is, for example, the Brexit in March 2019, um, because a lot of EU projects in a lot of EU projects, we have collaborative projects. And this means that uh, somehow different nationalities are coming together and doing research. And there's the question how um, it will evolve after the Brexit. So at the moment, it's not, it's not sure, but we can say that the approved EU projects will for sure, con will, will for sure continue and that signed funding agreements will remain valid. So this we can say, but it is somehow very, um, very likely that there will be somehow a change of the uh, concerning the participation of the UK in Horizon 2020, the current um, 
um, um, funding program for research and innovation. And it's important to have in mind that then at this moment when the Brexit is, is happening, that there are no commissioners of, from the UK are taking part in the European Commission. There are no members um, in the European Parliament from the UK. And about somehow we will have a, a loss of regions as well, the Committee of Regions. So there can be really a, a big yeah, loss for the European um, community. And probably you heard the last, in the last days, I think, I think two or three days ago, Mr. Barnier, the, the chief uh, negotiator of the Brexit from the European Commission, he said that it's very likely that there will be a, yeah, a hard Brexit and that this will have an influence on mobility. He didn't say on research mobility or mobility of researchers, but this is included. Yeah, so then we can move on to the framework um, programs for research and innovation. Here I want to show you the, the life cycle of the framework programs. So it's important for you to know that we have yeah, a, a long history of research programs. So it's, I think, 35 years of history and eight um, uh, funding programs which have been already, uh, yeah, how I say, run by the European Commission. And very often, nowadays, it's the life cycle starts with a public consultation. That means that you can um, take part if you are an um, yeah, interested person or even a researcher, you can um, leave your feedback to the European Commission, what went wrong with the last funding program and what you would like to have in the next one. And this leads me to the interim evaluation. These kind of interim ev evaluations are quite important. And this means if, for example, Horizon the, active, the current um, funding program, Horizon 2020, is uh, running till um, 2020, till the end of 2020, then there is not the decision for the next one just in 2020. It's years before. Mm. We already started in, I think, 2016 or 17 discussions about the next program. And this means if you want to um, assure that your research area or the field is really well into, um, included in the next research program, you should be quite early. So that's just important for you to know. Yeah, and again, yeah. There you can see the included uh, EU institutions and the member states in this um, cycle for the framework programs. And yeah, concerning the, the influence on your research projects. There I want to say that, you, that it's very good for you if you just not only read the, the main funding topic where you can find exactly or quite exactly what the EU com European Commission wants you to do in your research uh, project, but that you already, that, it, that you have a look on the, the wider scale, that means in the work program and as well in the framework programs and the specific program. And this leads to the um, European politics. With your research project, you should really, um, I say, have an, an influence on yeah, EU um, developments. You should really tackle the challenge of the EU and you should show that because there are, there's a big com uh, I say, competition for these EU funds, as we heard before. And you have to show why your project is better than another one. And there it's not only um, enough to say, I'm doing very wonderful research. That's not enough. You have to really to show the, um, the influence on society and where you will change the world, the EU, and how you are doing good, good things. Yeah, concerning Horizon 2020, the current um, framework program for research and innovation, there probably you know that is um, yeah, a, a merge of different former um, framework programs, so FP7 and 
um, the um, competitiveness, competitiveness and innovation program. And there again you see the word innovation, so there it's also a, an explanation why we have so much more innovation and an innovation focus in Horizon 2020 than in FP7. And the, the funding period is said already is from 2014 till the end of 2020. And it cor um, corresponds to the multi-annual financial framework. So that's important for you um, to because there you see um, that the discussions on the EU budget is not only an annual discussion, but it's also in a discussion for a wider, um, wider sense, that means for seven years. And there's the, the budget for the whole program fixed. Yeah, and um, as I already said, the, the current program, Horizon 2020, should, um, uh, is an instrument of the Europe 2020 strategy and the innovation um, strategy. You have an um, overview of the budget of the uh, um, current funding program Horizon 2020. So we have nearly 80 billion euros. It depends a little bit how you calculate it. You can find somehow different uh, numbers if you have in mind current prices or not. So we, you can um, see here three main pillars. And these pillars are excellent signs, industrial leadership and the societal challenges. And we have a, yeah, somehow horizontal parts um, which are shown in the um, uh, down, down um, the, I say on the um, bottom part of the of the slide, and we will, you will hear later on something about which kind of funding opportunities you will find in each of these um, pillars. Yeah, it's now it's important to 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 build up your European um, network or which kind of players you should contact. So then probably the first idea is, aha, there's the European Commission. Here you, on the slide you can see all the um, commissioners. You see one president, Mr. Juncker, and 28 commissioners, which corresponds to the member states. That means with the Brexit there will be less commissioners. But we, had al we heard already from Ms. Merkel that probably not each member state must have a commissioner and probably even not big ones. Hmm? So probably it's a question if we will have a German commissioner or not in the future. But this is only, yeah, how we say, um, a look into the future, which is unsure. So and there you can see some um, commissioners which are more or less important for you in different um, areas, as for example the um, the one in the second box, in the green box, who is working on health and food security, or the last one, Mr. Muedas, who is uh, yeah, the commissioner for research and innovation, as I said before. And if we are now concentrating on, on research, the um, EU com European Commission consists of, or the day-to-day -day work of the European Commission is done by Directorate uh, Generals, that means they are somehow like ministries in the member states. And in this, um, I call it DGs, like for RTD, for research, or for thematic areas. These DGs um, are quite, yeah, there are qu it's a quite huge number of DGs. So we have 31 DGs. And um, some of these policy DGs are responsible, responsible for different policy areas. That means for different fields, like for example for energy or climate change or health, as I said before. But they have executive agencies. And at the moment we have six executive agencies. And these executive agencies, they are managing the union programs. And this means as well Horizon 2020. And if we now look in the or organigram of the DGRTD concerning research and innovation, there you can see that they have that there are executive agency related um, related to them. And the most important ones for you are is the RIA, the Research Executive Agency for um, Research. 
and the European Research Council Executive Agency. And yeah, this is just important to have in mind that policy and management of the framework programs are divided. They are not done by the same institution. And this is also very important for you if you then think about contacts, whom you should contact with which issue. You can find a very useful um, page of the European Commission, which is called Who is Who? And there you can search for um, persons working for the European Commission and you find as well the most persons of the executive agencies as well. Because the executive agencies, they are seen as a part of the European Commission, but the difference is that they are only existing for a certain time period and if we have a new framework program, they, ha they are not really disappearing, but the contracts are renewed and there are somehow changes. So there you have some <laughs> famous examples. If you're searching for the European uh, contact from the European Commission, you could search for Mr. Juncker, for example, or if you search um, a member of the European Parliament, you could search for Mr. Tajani, the, uh, for example, the, the president of the European Parliament. But you can search for, for every different kind of um, MEP. But it's also very important if you're thinking on this policy area of the European Parliament, it's not only useful to get in contact with the, yeah, the politicians directly, but also with their assistants. Because they are doing the work for them, they are preparing the papers, and if you try to have a, a talk with them, or if you're writing a position paper, it's very good to, to send it to them, and they are thinking about if it's um, fitting in the political direction of the M MIP. And yeah, then also it's very important to think about EU memberships, that means in different organizations like the um, European University, University Associ Association. But we will come to that now. <laughs> and here you can see some just examples of how you could um, structure your network for EU activities. That means, for example, offices in Brussels, which are located in Brussels, um, and where your organization is taking part in, like the EUA or EARTO, which is an organization for um, research and technology um, organizations, which are a little bit closer to market, or Euroscience, which are a little bit closer to research, or IGLO, for example. Um, so there are different possibilities of um, yeah, getting in contact with organizations uh, related in, yeah, situated in Brussels, or as well your national ministries, because very often it's important even for national funding that you show that you are engaged in the EU as well, that you already succeeded in European um, funding projects, and um, then project partners, like in the Human Brain Project, or different other um, bigger initiatives in which you are taking part. Then we had heard already that um, I worked as national contact point. So in each member state there, is, um, there are um, national contact points which help you to write um, a proposal or to, to, to answer the question if your idea is fitting in the research um, agenda of the European um, Union. And as well then the European institutions as the European Commission, the Parliament or even the Council which leads you then again to the national ministries. Yeah, concerning the preparation of um, a work program, there again it's important to engage quite early. That means um, two up to five years before a work program is published. And there it's, um, it's a difference, or it's, um, you should um, have a mind whom to contact at which moment. Because um, if, for example, if you are engaged in an advisory group, you can, I will show you that later, you can be part of an advisory group from the European Commission, for the European Commission or a high level group. And these high level groups, they are working two or three years in advance on a, on a work program, on the, um, the research 
um, areas of a work program. Then the program committees. This means this is a committee of which consists of the European Commission and the member states and the delegations of the member states. They, are, um, uh, they consist of persons from the ministry and then uh, very often the national contact points, which then give the thematical background and input to the work program. So that's why, again, these, um, oops, these national contact points and the networks of the national contact points can be very useful for you. Yeah, and then we have the publication of the work program and then you can apply and be hopefully successful. In general, it's an annual process, even if the work programs are published for two or three years. They are um, under discussion each year again and there can be some, slightly, yeah, some slight differences each year. So that means some changes in the budget or yeah, some small changes. Um, yeah, what did I forget? Are ah, the technology platforms, for example, you can as well try there to get in contact with industry in general, because these technology platforms are very often driven by industry, which is very important for your for building up your consortia afterwards. Yeah. So to to sum up, um, you have different possibilities to to help uh, to put your research theme and area on the European level. That means you can take part in public consultations of the European Commission, which are um, taken part by, by internet. You can there, um, s you, if you're, for example, interested in a special, like the future program, um, Horizon Europe, there you can write a feedback of a certain um, amount of words, but very often you can upload also um, um, a position paper if you have a, something to say about the actual or current research idea. Then strategic projects, because if you are in somehow strategic projects like flagship initiatives, if you are in a flagship project, it's very, very often the commission is getting in contact with these kind of strategic projects because they are uh, very important for building up a certain research community in a special area and the European Commission is not, doesn't want to build up research programs which are not um, fitting to the research community. So and that's um, why they are getting in contact with the successful uh, managers of EU projects and they are asking for their input and their um, experience. Then memberships, that means committees in which you can take part. There are different um, associations in which you can have your say or your, your input. And the program committees again, that means your um, national ministries. And last but not least, you can become an um, evaluator for the European Commission. That means an expert for the European Commission. There's a special web page on which you can um, submit your proposal, where you can say what you're doing, what kind of research you are doing. And if you once enter this data set of the European Commission, um, you could be, um, how I say, <laughs> invited to evaluate other proposals. And that's very useful for you because on the one side, you are getting closely in contact with the European Commission and what they are, um, what they are willing to, to fund. And you, you can see as well what the, the other parts of the European research community is doing and preparing at this moment. Mm. But you have to, um, at, the mo at this special call, for example, when you are an evaluator, you cannot take part in a European project for sure. Yeah, concerning now the next um, framework program for research and innovation, we have a first draft of, of the European Commission. It's called Horizon Europe, so it's quite, um, quite uh, the same name. So Horizon 2020 is uh, renamed in um, Horizon Europe after 2000 um, or at the beginning of 2021. And there had been a midterm evaluation of Horizon 2020 and this midterm evaluation um, 
said that there should be not a, a big revolution, but an evolution. That means there are some, some parts um, which you can, can see they are um, consistent of Horizon 2020 and Horizon um, Europe. Probably you heard about the white paper of the future of Europe. So this is the white paper of um, Mr. Juncker, which was published last year. So this is the first discussion about how to go on in future. But this is not really the, the basics for Horizon Europe. At the moment, we ha haven't this kind of basics because the European Commission will be renewed next year and the new Commission will decide on that and not the old one. So we have to wait for that. But for sure, um, we know that um, Horizon Europe is more mission orientated and not any more challenge driven as Horizon 2020 at the moment. And this kind of mission orientation um, leads probably as well to a change of the flagships. But it's not sure at the moment if we will have flagships in Horizon Europe or not. But um, we will have somehow community building um, funding instruments, but probably they will somehow will be different than um, in Horizon 2020. And here you can see the structure, probably it reminds you that we have three pillars. Mm, they are renamed, these three pillars. The bu budget is somehow a little bit bigger, but not really, um, because at the end there are very often um, somehow reductions of the budget. And yeah, the European Parliament, for example, is asking for 120 billion euros for the next um, framework program. But we will see that because it's not finished at the moment. This is a discussion between um, the three main institutions. So we have the draft of the European Commission and now the, the Parliament wrote a first report on that. And the Council will now um, uh, work on this field as well. And I'm sure that there will be some changes and we will have a next round of this um, um, trilogy so that we will probably, if everything goes right, have something more concrete in spring 2019 concerning Horizon um, Europe. And you see that the first, um, first pillar, open science, is, um, you will see that uh, later on is somehow similar to Horizon 2020. We have a, a bigger change in the global challenges here, that we have some um, funding areas which are put together, but we have as well there um, the missions which are located in the second pillar. And these kind of missions, as Mr. Muedas, the Commissioner for Research and Innovation, uh, said, these missions should explain research and innovation to the people. So they, are, they should be very broad and they are, there will be some um, difference to the instruments of Fed flagships, for example. Then we have the third pillar, the open innovation um, uh, pillar. This is more dedicated, again, to innovation. We had in Horizon 2020 not such a um, pillar, which was concentrated on, could say, more market orientation and industry. It was more in, in different, uh, you could find it in different areas of Horizon 2020. And now we have here some special instruments, which um, are led to, um, or which are, um, I say, focused on industry. Yeah, then I thank you very much for your attention. And I feel, feel free to ask any kind of questions or you can um, discuss with us later on in the discussion round. Thank you. <laughs>